So you want to buy your first LARP sword. Where do you start? How do you know you'll like it? Watch on to find the answers to these questions so you can get the sword that's right for you on the first try. Make sure to stay to the end of the video today because there is one final tip that I wasn't able to squeeze into any of the other steps and you won't want to miss that at the end. So we're going to go ahead and start from scratch and assume that you know nothing about swords, you know nothing about what it is that you think you might want to use. So the first step is to figure out what your preferred fighting style is. If you know what style you're trying to copy or you know a fair bit about swords but you just don't know what size you want to get, you can go ahead and skip to the timestamp. It'll either be in the description or if I can figure it out, it'll be along the time bar. So how do you decide what style of sword is right for you? How do you decide what size is right for you? Well, unfortunately, you can't test any of the swords before you buy them unless you're lucky enough to live right next to a sword vendor. So you're going to have to do some experimenting and testing to see what interests you and what feels the most natural. You're gonna need some items for these tests first, something to use as a stand-in shield and something to use as a stand-in sword. For the shield, you could use a piece of cardboard, a pot lid, a sled, anything to just sort of fill that hand. And you can go ahead and experiment with different sizes. All of the tips for this entire video can be used for any weapon type or any shield type. For your starting sword length, I think that 36 inches with about eight inches for the handle is the perfect starting point. And then you can scale up or down from there. You could use a wiffle ball bat, a driveway marker, be careful of splinters, a stick, a dowel, a cane. All of these would be the perfect size. Now go ahead and strike a fighting stance and just practice. Make a note of what you dislike, what you like, what you would prefer, and what feels awkward. Now go ahead and do a few flourishes with just the blade. Experiment with choking up or down on the handle to give yourself a longer handle length or shorter one. You might find that you are instinctively more comfortable with a certain handle length. You might also find that as you are swinging the sword around, your hand automatically slides up or down the sword to find that optimized balance. Use a rubber band to mark what instinctively seems best so that you can measure it later so that you know what you're looking for. Now practice with the shield or not and make some new notes about how you feel. You might now realize that you wish the blade was longer or shorter with this new handle length. Go ahead and make some new notes based on these tests to see what sized sword you think you want and what sized shield you want if applicable. Have a couple of numbers say 38, 42, and 45. This range is helpful in case you find a sword design that you like that doesn't exactly match the size that you want. Try to find a way to test out actual weapons that are of your preferred size. And there are two ways that I can think of. You could go to a LARP and see if they have any weapons that are of your preferred size that you might be able to uh, practice with or mess around with. Some LARPs are equipped to lend out weapons and some are not, so you'd have to research that. Or Renaissance Fair season is beginning to ramp up. Go to a fair and find one of the vendors that sells wooden swords. Go ahead and find the sword size that you're looking for and just practice a little bit. You want to try to practice with wood rather than finding a real sword vendor because wood will be a more accurate gauge for the weight of your LARP sword once you get it. You'll also be able to swing the wooden sword around a little bit more without being kicked out of the fair for being a danger to yourself and others. All right, so now you know how to pick a fighting style and then size your weapon from scratch, but what if you already know what fighting style you're trying to emulate? You might know a fair bit about swords already, or you might be trying to copy a character from a TV show, movie, book, or game, and then use their weapon and copy their fighting style. In any of these cases, you should do your research on the weapon that you're copying first, and then find the LARP equivalent that's right for you. For instance, I wanted a sword with the same dimensions as Jon Snow's long claw from the TV show Game of Thrones, because I personally like bastard swords. Kit Harrington is 5'7", and so am I. An owl. Kit Harrington is 5'7", and so am I, and that is important for making sure that your weapon scales correctly. If the person you're copying happens to be far taller or far shorter than you, you need to make sure that you get this ratio correct, because otherwise you're going to have the correct weapon, but you're not going to be able to use it the same way that is initially intended. For example, if I was going to be copying Geralt of Rivia, say, in the games people estimate him to be between 5'10 and 6'3. 
His sword blades are 35 inches plus the handle, so an approximately six foot tall person with a 45 inch long sword would have to scale down to a five foot seven person with a 41 inch sword. The way I got this ratio is that I took the total length of the sword in question and then divided it by the approximate height of the person I'm copying, and then this new number is your scale ratio. It should be a decimal. You then multiply that number by your own height and then you have your new scaled sword length. I didn't have to do any size conversion so I looked up some replicas online, found that they were an average of about 45 inches long. I knew that I wanted a Kalamazil brand weapon, so this is what I got. Now this brings us to our last stage. You know what style of sword you want to be using, you know what size sword you want to be using, but you need to know what brand suits your needs best. And now there are some other factors that we need to consider. In no particular order other than the order listed, we have price, we have size, which we already covered, materials, maintenance, weight, and can you use the sword at the LARP that you plan on attending? Now, as far as pricing goes, only you are in charge of your own budget, but luckily LARP swords are not necessarily a you get what you pay for category as much as this. There are reputable brands for safe LARP grade weapons, and then there are foam swords. If you get a LARP weapon that is from a reputable brand, even their cheaper battle ready options are going to be very high quality. I'm going to recommend that if you are shopping online that you try to stay away from sites like Amazon and really try to use medieval specific websites or LARP specific websites. Even the cheapest options for reputable brands don't generally go below $40. If you're looking around on Amazon and you see a foam sword that looks really really cool and it's huge and it's only $20 and it looks too good to be true, it's because it probably is. Here is a very fast breakdown of some of the top most reputable brands. I can go more in depth into these in a later video, but this is just a very quick breakdown. And as such, the descriptions might sound a little blunt, but these are all really good options. Epic Armory, and this is an Epic Armory sword, is going to be your most budget-friendly option. Their weapons tend to be the lightest out of all of these options, and they do require maintenance with a silicone spray to keep the latex coating from drying out. These will degrade a little bit more quickly than the more expensive options. The latex will show signs of cracking if they are not treated properly, and they will 100% melt if you leave them in a hot car. They are made from an EVA-style closed cell foam and then coated with a thin layer of latex. Latex. They are LARP swords, and that is exactly what they look like. Mythalon and Forgotten Dreams are, I would say, more in the middle range category in terms of pricing. Forgotten Dreams weapons are actually rather difficult to find online in 2021, and I have no idea why that is. I did find a link and that will be in the description. It is not an affiliate link. If that changes, there will be a disclaimer. That being said, I actually really love these weapons. Their latex coating is much thicker than any other latex weapon that I have experienced and they are incredibly durable. I've never treated a Forgotten Dreams latex weapon with silicone spray and they all still look brand new. They all have this sort of hand forged metal texture on them, but my favorite thing about them is that they are incredibly well balanced for being LARP swords. They are just a little bit heavier than some of the cheaper options that are out there. These are just very comfortable swords, durable and easy to wield all day without feeling too light. These weapons follow the same formula of being probably a fiberglass core in the center surrounded by EVA foam and then coated with, again, a very durable layer of latex. These weapons look like LARP weapons, but I would say that they have a very clean aesthetic line. The these please me. I am pleased. Now, I have not held, nor have I ever had experience with a Mythalon weapon yet. I do have clothes and armor from the Mythalon company, and those are all very good quality, but I cannot speak to the quality of the LARP swords simply because I've never held one. Perhaps that will be a follow-up video. Go ahead and subscribe if you want to see that. They have a bunch of cheaper options, but they also get up into some very expensive options that are absolutely drop-dead gorgeous and realistic. Some Mythalon weapons are the standard foam and latex, like the two brands that we talked about previously, but some are hybrid weapons that use the latex and foam method along with an injection foam molding process, but I would really need to get my hands on one of these hybrid weapons in order to really understand what that means means. Now, Calamisil is going to be the most expensive option 
on average. Even their cheapest, most budget level stuff is not gonna be under $80. Now, these weapons are incredibly durable. They require no maintenance and they can easily be repainted if they start to lose their color. And that is because these are not latex weapons. Kalamazil uses its own injection foam mold formula. These are a lot heavier than all of the other brands I haven't tested against Mythalon yet. And as a result, they can hit a little bit harder than the other brands as well. These do require a certain amount of strength to wield, and if you do not train, you will likely fatigue if you're fighting for more than a couple of minutes. Kalamazil boasts a custom sword builder on their website, so if you know exactly what you want, you have the cash and a couple of weeks for them to build it, this is actually a really cool option. These weapons in general tend to look a little bit more realistic in my opinion, and they handle a little bit more realistically too because of their weight. So we've covered size. All of these brands make weapons of various different sizes. We've now covered weight materials and maintenance as those are all directly related to the brands but there was one final thing that we haven't discussed yet that can play a major part in whether or not you enjoy your new weapon and that is handles not just how the sword handles but it's literal actual handle. You want a handle that is going to be comfortable, something that you would want to be able to use all day without chafing, without uh, your hand starting to hurt because you have to grip it too tightly or your hand will slip off the sword. And you want to avoid handles that are completely cylindrical. Real historical swords have handles that are oblong in shape so that you can tell where the blade orientation is. Now that matters less for us because, you know, we're not actually cutting anything with these swords, but if you can't tell where your sword resides in space, and it gets turned and then you're swinging with the flat of your blade not only do you look a little silly but it's also less efficient in terms of the energy that you're using and it can be dangerous if you hit someone wrong now I believe all of the brands that I've talked about today have a mix of both cylindrical and what I would call oblong or historical handles another thing to keep in mind is that epic armory and forgotten dreams have handles that are rubberized underneath and then wrapped in suede or cloth while Calamus Sil and I believe Mythalon have handles that are actually just incredibly dense molded foam that has been painted and texturized. I'm not saying that one is better than the other, just something to keep in mind. Epic Armory swords generally tend to have very thin handles, whereas Kalamazil swords generally tend to have pretty thick handles. In fact, I have trouble uh, gripping the sword uh, comfortably around the handle, even though I love it, even though it's my baby. Now there is one final thing you need to do before you go out and buy your first sword, and that is make sure. Post on forums, send emails, check the rule books, make sure that the weapon that you buy and the brand that you buy it from are going to be accepted by the weapon inspection at your LARP. I can think of nothing related to LARP swords sadder than buying a brand new sword and then showing up to a LARP and having them go, no, utter sadness. If you're with me here at the end of the video, I want to thank you for watching all the way through. We just hit over 100 subscribers on the channel and I know that's nothing in the grand scheme of YouTube, but it really means a lot to me that people are watching and enjoying my videos. And I hope that I continue to create videos that you guys find entertaining or thought provoking or informative. If you're just discovering me for the first time, I want to thank you as well and invite you to subscribe and join the community and the discussion. If you liked the video, please like the video and share it with a friend of yours who needs to arm themselves too. But now that you are armed with the knowledge to arm yourself, I want to wish you good luck on your adventures.